Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Graham, it's Chris Adams, the host of Retro Life for You. Uh, this week, we got a special guest with us, a good friend of mine from back in the day, Mr. John Cobb. John, how you doing? I'm good, dude. Thanks for having me. How you doing? I've been doing pretty good. Uh, uh, nobody out there knows this, but I haven't seen you in I don't know how long. I mean, it's probably been, what, uh, early, no, about mid-2000s or something? I mean, I've talked to you, obviously, before since then, but I mean, actually seen you before today. It's been a good while. It's been since 97. God, you're going to make me feel old now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, it, it has been that old, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Well, today we're going to be talking Star Wars, the the world of Star Wars, I'm going to call it, the, the galaxy, the world, the lore, the fandom, all the good stuff that makes Star Wars what it is. You know, when it came out, it was one of the greatest things ever, I thought, as a kid, uh, just seeing all these things going on in space and everything. And the, the fact that you have the Jedis with the lightsabers, that was the biggest thing for me. I don't know what sold you on Star Wars originally, but it was the lightsabers that got me. Yep. Same thing. It was the lightsabers, the Jedi's. You know, that's that's immediately what captured my uh, attention. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can go with all the space battles all you want, but we already had Battlestar Galactica. We had Buck Rogers. We had you know some Star Trek out there already. Mm-hmm. We already knew what that was like. But having something introduced to you new, like the Jedi's um, and the use of what they called what they referred to as the Force was something that was that was huge to the kids out there. We all wanted to be Jedis, no doubt. Um, the first movie uh, that we were introduced to, John, was A New Hope. That's where they brought in uh, Luke Skywalker as, I believe he was 18 at the time. Yeah. And wanting to get away from his uncle's farm in Tatooine. He wanted to go and join the Rebel Alliance, but he didn't want him to go. Uh, his, all, all his other friends have left. He's the last one left behind, it seems like, and it's it should be his time to go, but he's not getting to go. Uh, when did, I, I don't know, I know you're younger than I am. When did you see the first movie? Like, at, at what age did you see it? And, uh, I had to have saw it, you know, to recollection, uh, four or five years old. Uh, you know, naturally on TV, what you would have that Sunday night. Uh, on ABC, you know, that kind of event that we remember. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, just immediately uh, from the get-go of seeing the two sons and, you know, seeing the the different aliens that actually looked real, um, you know, I I immediately was hooked. Uh, They did such a great job on making everything feel real to us on that. Everything They did. They, you know... and I like how now, you know, not to, not to, you know, go too far now, but I like how the new Star Wars, uh, they're, you know, and again, not going into it, but they've gone back to some of that puppeteering to make the stuff, you know, gone, try to tone back the CGI and that yeah. makes it look more real. And that's what I loved about the originals is those, you know, those creatures actually looked real. Yeah. I mean, look how it's grown from the get-go, from what it started out as to what they evolved to, kind of what they're falling back to again. They knew they went back to what worked and what people liked. But the galaxy itself is so huge right now because of, I, I guess, thanks to Disney and whoever else is working with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't care too much for, I believe her name is Kathleen Kennedy. No. Um, don't care too much for her and some of her work that she's done, but some of it's been pretty good. I can't knock all of it, but to think that they're doing things now that people wanted to see all along, like, um, you know, you get the book of Boba Fett, you've got the Mandalorian, you got Andor coming out, mm-hmm. uh, based this regular shows, basically, we just got done watching Kenobi. And that was, for me, that was awesome. Uh, seeing the some story parts. of that. Yeah, well, some parts. Yeah. I mean, I, I, as everything, it, it can't be 100% great. There's got to be some right. flaws that we're not going to like in there and everything. It and can't I, be Empire and A New Hope where every single thing is absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's it, and, and the story, it was never really laid out there, I don't think, of unless it was a standalone book somebody had written on what they thought Obi-Wan Kenobi had done 
after the fact he disappeared and everything. Well, the, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, um, the book, um, gosh, it escapes me right now and I may have to look it up, but the book of Obi-Wan when he was on Tatooine, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, there's never Vader or anything, you know, he basically throws uh, over a, a small time crime syndicate that's uh, not even like the Huts or, um, you know, the other ones I can't think of. The, the Pikes, it's none of them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they, they had to come up with their own and I thought they did a, a good job with it. I think it was some of the acting uh, that was, you know, uh, less to be desired is what got me about Obi-Wan. Yeah, I, I remember in A New Hope where Darth Vader is walking off away from the Millennium Falcon, I believe it was, or maybe it was somewhere in the Death Star. I can't remember now which it was, but he's telling somebody there that he hasn't felt this. He's, he's feeling something in the Force, and he hasn't mm-hmm. felt this since a certain time. He goes, and he actually stops and goes, I haven't felt this since... And then he walks away. I haven't sense this presence. Yes. See, yep. And then he goes away. So yep. you don't know what this presence is he's talking about. Where did he feel it last? Where was it? So now that kind of left open what they did for them fighting in that show. So. Yeah, and he also says right at, you know, right at the beginning of the duel with uh, Obi-Wan, he says, uh, when we last met, I was the apprentice and you were the master. And so they did great. At the end of Obi Wan, yeah. where Obi Wan unleashed, you know, total force hell upon him and showed him, I'm still the more powerful. Uh, right, Jedi. and that was my favorite part of seeing that different that that part of Obi Wan we hadn't seen before. So that that awesome. was good. It was awesome, dude. It, it literally just it was for us as kids and us growing up as teenagers. You always wanted to see just what the force, you know how massive and how amazing it could truly be. And, uh, you know, they, they nailed it. Um, you know, they, they touched on it in empire where he's fighting Luke and Luke kind of gets the best of him for a second. He goes, all right, man, now I'm just going to use my mind to kick your butt. So they, you know, that was the most we'd ever seen with the force. So for Obi-Wan just to step back and kind of do the same thing, what Vader did to Luke, you know, of going, mm-hmm. I don't even have to use my sword, man. I'm just going to use the total force to defeat you. It, I'm with you, dude. I was just like absolutely perfect. Y'all nailed it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what one of the things about being a Star Wars fan, why it's so great, because you've got such a wide variety and range of what you can go to. Anything from back, like I said, with the original 4, 5, and 6 to the prequels they released, 1, 2, and 3, up into what they're doing on Disney now. There's something for everybody out there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there really is. You can get it from you know all generations and all likings. Whether you whether you like kind of the um, the corny you know Star Wars or whether you want the deep dark you know Star Wars, you're getting both of that now. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, going back to A New Hope and everything. Actually, hang on a second. And you, you know noise? that your mic you hear a noise? kind of got like this weird kind of echo to it now. That's why I'm asking if you hear something. Yeah, it's like a crackling popping. Yeah, a crackling. Talk. Yeah. Is it just when I talk or is it, is it anything else? I hear a, uh, a low static in the background. It's gone I now. Just, that was the fan I just turned off. I always edit that out with the... Uh, I, I'll edit all this out here when we're doing this, but... Okay. I can't figure out where that sound is coming from, though. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's Is it doing it when I'm talking? Uh, I, hear it on, I hear it both times. So when I'm talking and you're talking both. Hmm. It sounds like somebody's like just eating something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you can edit that out, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. Well, that part, I don't know if I can edit out. That's what I'm oh. saying. I don't know what it is. I can't figure out where it's coming from.
Did you hear that when I did that? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a an echo somewhat with like crackling. Um I don't know. Okay, what about now? No, there it went again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's odd. I swear, that's never come on before. I don't know what it is. Is there anything? Are you using it? So you're using your phone, though, right? Is there anything around yeah. the phone? There's, um, I, as far as I know of, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what it could be from my end. Maybe it is. I don't know. I I, I, I just I, I can't tell it. I don't have a way of telling it. Do you want me to um? Let me look on my tablet again to see if I received that from you. Did you text it? To, yeah, you texted it. I didn't receive that um. That text to join. Um. Um, I sent something to 615-906-7317. And then I said, try this. Hold on. My bad. Um, 615-906-7317. Yeah, that's. I don't know why I didn't get it. I don't know. It's sent from my iPhone to the iMessage. Sent at 12.59 p.m. It's a little picture like you would have seen on your cell phone with uh, yeah. a duck and duck in the center or whatever. It says browser-based live studio. Yeah, I didn't get it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, let mm -hmm. me try... But maybe I can um, take what if you I, sent. I'll just send it again. I'm going to see if I can uh, send it to my tablet. Um, no, it won't let me. I don't know why. I tell you what, go to your browser and your tablet. It's not crackling anymore. What? You're not. I don't hear that echo or anything anymore. At all. I'm not hearing it either. No. It's freaking weird, dude. <laughs> are you Are you sure you wouldn't stand it next to something where your your speaker might have been picking it up? And. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was close to my computer, and my computer was messing with it. Um, I don't, I don't know. It was definitely a crackling sound, yeah, though. It's gone. And you're right. I don't hear it now. All right. Well, let's try and pick back up where we left off, didn't we? Okay. If that's the case. If anything, if we, if you end up having to go to your tablet, I can read off the um, invite to you, and you can type it in without having okay. to click on it. If we have to go that route, but um, so. Let me give it about a four or five second silent pause, and then I'll pick it up and say, you know, back to a new hope. Okay, so back to a new hope. Once again, um, the meeting of Luke Skywalker, uh, Han Solo, where you know you've got uh, Obi Wan at the time, who's got Luke talked into going with him. He's he's first off, he talked him and take him. You know, back to Moss Eisley, mm -hmm. I think it was. But on his way there, he has to go back and check on his aunt and uncle and finds him killed by, um, you know, by the, uh, the 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 stormtroopers, which cracks me up in, in a sense because Obi Wan's like, only the precise shots <laughs> of an Imperial stormtrooper can do this, and we and all know the only person that shot a laser gun worse than a stormtrooper was Paul Vaughn. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. come on. We, 
What if, Paul got a stray shot. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll end up seeing him one of these days soon. I, I work in an area where he lives, so eventually I'll, I'll see him. I'll make sure I tell him I took a shot at him. He won't, yeah, he'll Paul, laugh. that was not planned. I had no idea that that was going to happen. So <laughs> he'll, just, he'll, just, he'll, just, he'll just laugh. It's cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny how bad they shoot. They don't hit nothing ever. And he's like, only the precise shooting of an Imperial Stormtrooper could do this. Yep. And then oh. you see through all the movies, they never can hit a darn thing, man. Yeah, in all reality, if you want to compare it to something, to say they're just as bad as the A-Team. They shoot, like, thousands of rounds and don't <laughs> yeah. hit nothing in the process. Yeah. And they sure ain't scaring nobody with them. I mean... No. Crazy. Um, but that's where we get introduced to Han Solo and Chewbacca and bring them into the picture while they're there. And um, talk about a, a, a duo that people... That, I mean, as kids growing up, that you and your friends always wanted to be. It was always Han Solo... And Luke Skywalker, and the argument was always who gets to be Luke Skywalker. You know, of course, crazy. But, but, you, no, um, but you, poor Chewie, no. Go ahead. I, I said, poor Chewie. Nobody ever wanted to be Chewie. No. And then as you get older, you're just like, dude, they were such cool characters, man. I think I'm starting to relate to them more than I do actually Luke <laughs> Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the story originally. You know, for those who were just, I guess, under a rock in a cave, never watched it. And I do know some people who've never watched Star Wars, but, you know, unbelievably to me. But, uh, of course, this is a, a, a movie based on, you know, tyranny of the, the I'm just going to say the dark side. Mm-hmm. You know, being ruled by Darth Vader and everything, the Imperials, wanting to rule the galaxy. And you got a young rebel alliance group that is standing up to it the tyranny to take things back over they've created this thing called a death star that can destroy an entire planet and they need to take this thing out somebody has gone in and got the plans to destroy the death star and they send in their 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 x-wings and you know take their shots at it and all and eventually boom gone right one of the best things that ever happened for me was them going back on that and doing the Rogue One movies, a standalone movie. You get the the details of the of what happened, of how they got those Death Star plans. I mean, it's like it didn't really matter at first when you watched the movies. Mm-hmm. All you know is someone got the plans, and you didn't hear that they died in the process, that the planet got destroyed. You just know that someone got plans. Now you're going to go destroy it. But to see that get laid out like it did, and especially at the very end of it, to see how strong Darth Vader was at the time, the way he made that march down the hallway of that ship to try and retrieve those plans before they got away from him uh, was was pretty awesome. And you can tie that movie directly into New Hope. Yeah, absolutely seamless between the two. Um, right. And the, the Darth Vader uh, scene, I stood up in the movie theater and clapped because I was like, that's exactly what I want to see from the Dark Lord of the Sith. I wanted mm-hmm. to see him cut through them like it, it, literally they're made out of paper mache. It was done so well. The, you know, the atmosphere of, you know, you just hear him, you see the smoke, and then you just see the red saber. It was, you really couldn't have done it for a Star Wars fan and a lover of Vader because Vader's my all-time favorite Star Wars character. Uh, yeah. When I was little, my mother took me uh, at five years old to Toys R Us. Remember when they used to have the characters come out and you could meet the characters at Toys R Us? Yeah. Dude, they found the right guy to play Vader because he was enormous. And the other kids were like crying and you know, upset. <laughs> And, dude, I was so happy I couldn't stand it. So for them to do Vader like that was, I mean, it was almost as corny and as nerdy as it sounds, it was almost, it brought tears because it was like, that's what I wanted to see. Um, and hey, like, I'm, you're talking about as corny as it sounds. I mean, women can women can boo-hoo at the wedding movies. We get to boo-hoo at the Marvel and the Star Wars movies, exactly, okay? Exactly, man. We, we, we got ours. So. Like real men. <laughs> That's right. Real men. No, I, I can't look down on you for that. I believe half the 
half the Marvel universe was crying when Tony Stark uh, snapped his fingers at the end. So exactly, exactly. So uh, uh, but we to totally sure, get where you're going on it. You're you're exactly right. Rogue One was done so well, um, just you know from beginning to end, uh, and it was. It was probably the first start when it came out. I kind of a little bit stuck my nose up at it because I go, well, there's not going to be any Jedi's in it, man. So why do I want to see a Star Wars movie without Jedi's? And then the way they did it was like, I didn't need Jedi's for this story. Mm -hmm. Um, It really embodied, like you said, the struggle of the rebellion and what these these small group of rebels were willing to give up. Because they knew it was imminent death to, you know, hopefully be the spark to, uh, you know, to fight the Empire. And so, yeah, dude, it, it, it moved up into my top four of all-time Star Wars movies uh, immediately. And that's why Andor is going to be so good. You know, the series coming on mm-hmm. Disney soon. That, that's why that's going to be so good. You're going to get more in-depth to that story of Rogue One of what led up to it and the, the different things that he had done. He told her he had done things that she didn't know that he wasn't exactly proud of, but he did for the, you know, for the rebels. Yeah. I so, think it's know, gonna be all fantastic for the cause from the previews, man, it looks just, I don't know who's directing it. Yeah. Um, I should know that, but it looks just, Oh, it looks so good. I'm super excited for that. Yeah. So we go from a, uh, you know, a new hope where they, you know, at the end of it, blow up the death star take care of business. Darth Vader is sent reeling throughout the space by, he didn't really take a shot from the Millennium Falcon. He threw one next to him and that ship turned into him, which caused him to fall off his path and just start rolling out into space. And you don't really know what happened from there too much because they're celebrating the destruction of the Death Star. Uh, You go from there, you move forward, you go into the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, I forget how many years ahead. You may remember how many years were in between but they go so many years in between this, uh, what, what's going on now. They're on the planet Hoth when it starts out and it goes from there. They get the, uh, the Rebel Alliance, one of their bases there where they attract them down to there and they're trying to take out the base as well as whoever else may be there. And that's where you start seeing the Force Ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi start appearing to Luke, telling mm-hmm. him he wants him to go to the Dagobah system to train with Yoda. And that starts bringing out a really big thing because now, now we get to see, you know, another Jedi Master who's going to train him since Obi Wan is gone. And when you get there, when he gets there, <laughs> and he runs into this little thing in the jungle who's trying mm-hmm. to get into his all his stuff and take his stuff, he doesn't realize, you know, this is Yoda. It's like he's testing him, he's testing his patience and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing here? What do you want? Can I have this? Let me take that. Oh, you know, he's thinking stuff over his shoulders left and right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not and I'm not gonna do the pathetic Yoda voice that I try to do sometimes. I'm not gonna do it. Aww. But but uh he 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 suddenly stops and it's like he's talking to someone who's not there and he says, you know, I can't do it, I can't train him. And uh then you hear Obi-Wan's voice kind of nowhere, and then it's for I, I believe his force ghost appears at that point again, too, talking about no. was I need no, no force ghost at the time, no. just the voice. Yep. Okay, so he's like, was I any different at that time? And which led you to believe that he was his his master at the time. Yes. And as it turns out, not so much the case. He was a master to him. He's he was above him. Yeah. But he wasn't his. He wasn't his direct master. That, that that you know he was not Yoda's Padawan. Right. Uh, which is one of the things that we'll get into in a, in a minute that I did like about the the prequels and everything but uh eventually he goes ahead and agrees to train luke takes him to the process uh luke does not listen to him he goes to leave early before his training is done because he senses his friends are in danger uh you've got uh han and chewy and leia they're all in danger from vader who is now taking them from cloud city after lando calrissian has uh betrayed him and man, Lando Calrissian. Now I'm just thinking of that movie. Prettiest again. dude in all of Star <laughs> Wars, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, we did get some cool toys off of it, though. Yep. I'll say that. So some cool toys from the, the, the from, from Cloud City being a part of the movie and everything. And uh, as it turns out, he does uh, actually live up to his true scoundrel self 
And not only did he turn on Han, he turns right back and turns on Vader and them to help mm-hmm. get Han back and everything. Either that or Chewbacca is going to snap his head off at the shoulders. Yep. One of the two. Yep. Uh, so got Luke leaving. He goes, we get our first confrontation with him and Vader now. And I thought it was pretty cool the way that at the time when it happened, I thought the lightsaber battle was pretty good. Uh, it was way better than what we got from Vader and Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. Vader and Obi-Wan in the previous movie, their lightsaber battle just seemed like they were just jabbing at each other with the sword, you know, and maybe tilting it aside like they were doing fencing mm-hmm. or something. We didn't want fencing, you know, at this point in time in the when things are coming out, this is about the time, if you think about it, when these movies are coming out now with Empire Strikes Back and everything, this is close time right when all these ninja movies were kicking up and starting out. Yep. They were having legit sword fights, you know? So this is what we wanted to see from the Jedi. We were wanting to see legit sword fights that looked that looked fancy and well choreographed, not just this little fencing bit where they're jabbing at each other and slapping it away with their sword and things like that. So we got a better fight sequence out of them, I thought. Um, and then you got Vader showing him the you know the real power of the Force by using the Force just to sling stuff at him right and left while he's yeah. trying to defend himself, and he finds he can't defend himself. And then we get the infamous line that nobody can ever remember and get right. How did it? How how was it really said? You know, Luke, I am your father, or I am your father. You know, it's no, <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> See, and everybody's like, no, it was specifically said like this. I remember I've seen it a thousand times. Yeah, it's no, I am your father because he says, <laughs> Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. And he says, You, he told me you killed him. He goes, No, I yeah. am your father. So that's that. Look it up. That's the yeah. <laughs> no, go back and watch it. Go back yeah. and watch it. Fast forward to the one scene, get your DVD out, skip ahead of the one scene, whoever you're watching it on, you know. You will see that's exactly what it said. Now, whether we remember it differently from when we were younger or not, we, maybe we just didn't know because we just heard what we wanted to hear because it's a cool, such a cool scene we're taking in at the time at a younger age. But It shocked the world when yeah. that was said. And, 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 and it shocked a lot of people in the film, too, because if you've ever listened to uh, Mark Hamill tell the story, nobody else knew but him yeah. you know, and the director. That's it. Just them. Uh, he couldn't tell Harrison Ford. He couldn't tell Carrie Fisher. He said Harrison Ford come up to him and said, what, kid? So you couldn't tell me what was going on? You couldn't tell me that was your daddy or something? And he said, and I remember him making the comment. He said at the time there were like several forms of communication. So there was telephone, telegraph, telecarry. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, know, you tell her, she'd tell everybody in the world. So I couldn't tell her for sure. <laughs> Um, so he said, we had to keep it real quiet. But when I, he said, when I first seen it, I was like, man, it's a lot to take in. My father is the dark lord of the galaxy. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we go from there. We get this news. You know, everybody's taking it in, soaking it in. You know, he doesn't believe it. And he decides he's going to just, he's not going to join him. He ain't going to let him have him. So he just falls off, falls yep. back, says, nope, you're not taking me. I'm just, I'll just kill myself first. Doesn't kill himself. You know, lands in like one of the little trash shoot type areas, I guess, where they drop things out in space. Leia feels him calling for her in the force, and she has Lando turn around and go back and pick him up. And we end from there, basically, kind of end from there. There's a, little, there's a couple more things in between, but I mean, that's basically the end of the movie. We Greatest to return. movie ever made. And it was of the three. I have a hard time determining whether I like the first or second one better. I can understand that as long as you didn't say Jedi. No, it's not not Jedi. It's it's either the first or the second one for me. Uh, which I'm I'm glad they kind of you know you you had to have something to wrap it up in some form or another. So we go to Return of the Jedi, where they're going to go ahead and have the final installment of the Star Wars trilogy uh, that they never now originally Lucas planned on nine films. Um, of his nine films, he had stuff planned out for them, everything written out, and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. So four, five, and six, that was where the meat of the uh, of the movie franchise was. So that's why he went there with it because he didn't know if he could really do the others and make it work, and he didn't know if he could take nine films in a row over that period of time and hold people's interest completely. Yeah, he didn't want to take a chance on it, so he went with the top three he thought would be best. 
and four, five, and six in that storyline. Uh, the one, two, and three, obviously, were going to be the prequels with Obi Wan being younger and such, and seven, eight, and nine were going to be uh, some post things after Return of the Jedi, and that could have gone several ways if he had changed his mind. But his original plan was they were going to have a clone. Uh, they were going to have clones of Vader. Yeah. Uh, I don't yep. know if you've ever read this, if you've read that plot online or not. It, it was leaked out for a long time. You could read about that. Um, I would have rather if they were going to do a seven, eight, nine, that they had touched maybe some on dark forces that they did. Um, I think it was called dark forces. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong because I can't remember some of these things for sure anymore. I read a couple of the books, like where um. Han Solo and Princess Leia got married. They had twins. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, Jaina. Shadow, uh, no, what I think Shadows it was, of the Empire? Because that's that's between Empire and uh, Jedi. No, it is. this was um, this was like Dark Jedi or Dark Forces. This is where Luke had taken uh, into he had been taken to the dark side a little bit. Yeah, he almost succumbed because he was yeah. looking for the uh, the holocrons, the Sith holocrons, mm-hmm. and it was an old. Uh, uh, I can't remember the Sith Lord that was starting to, uh, you know, somewhat possessing, but all, but more than anything, kind of influencing. So yeah, that I'm with yeah. you, dude. I would have, I would have enjoyed that much more. And I, I think the twins' names it was it was Jason Solo, mm-hmm. and w- w- was it Jaina and Jason? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they said uh, so between them, and they had other Jedi's that he Luke had been training. Uh, I would have thought that storyline would have been great to have for seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, um, I agree. And you know, I, I heard them say, "Well, all this, you know, this true Star Wars fans already know the story." It's like, well, dude, we yeah, and we liked it, and we kind of already knew the story in the first three. So it's you know, you when you we'll got the imp- we know who. Uh, Palpatine is. We know that he's, you know, going to be the emperor. So I would have just gone ahead and gone with it because it was so well done. Yeah, and this is why a lot of people turn their noses up to. Uh, we, me and you kind of touched on it ba- briefly, but this is why a lot of people turn their noses up to Ray and uh, the whole thing with Leia leading the the alliance at this point. Now Luke disappearing for all this time, not to be found. Uh, it's like, why was this story made? Why did Luke Skywalker just disappear? Because he felt he 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 failed one student, which just so happened to be his nephew. But still, you know, he's supposed to be the the most powerful Jedi that we had. Why would yeah. he suddenly just disappear in exile? Because he feels he failed one student when he had so many more to work with too, and more th- good things he could done. So they and then they go to bring in. You find out ultimately that Ray is a descendant of Palpatine. Yeah. I, I mean, like, and, and then she takes the name of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, I, no. This is, <laughs> no. this is why, this is why a lot of people didn't care for this. Now, if they had gone a different route, there was a one where the, where the stormtrooper Finn, I forget what his actual stormtrooper number was, but they called him Finn. Uh, at one point he's holding a lightsaber in the first one. And the previews, we see him holding a lightsaber. We see Kylo Ren and we see Ray. And we're wondering who's this Jedi going to be now? Who's the, we know Kylo Ren's the big baddie. Who's going to be the Jedi? Her or him? He would have been more believable at this point of a storyline because they could have made him a descendant of Mace Windu. Yeah, no, they could have like done that. They could have done that, but they didn't go that route with it. Obviously, they went with her, and then come to find out that you know she's a granddaughter of the most evil man in the world. Yeah, and it was like, and then she took the name of Skywalker. It's like, uh, uh. now I didn't have a problem with Ray. I actually, um, you know, surprisingly, I was like, okay, man, I can dig Ray, uh, but I did not dig that. It's, ultimately, it's, it's a it's a Palpatine. It's the story. The universe. No, it's the story. Not, it's the no. story they went with. It's bad. Not the people and the the fact that she was a Jedi. Not that. It's it's the storyline they went with that made it so bad. Yeah, exactly. And it just it yeah. just didn't work. And if you noticed, they laid everything out just like four, five, and six did. They introduced you to the new Jedi person in the first one, who you know uh, she's orphaned basically mm-hmm. at this point. 
parents are gone. They ain't coming back. Luke's staying with his aunt and uncle. No parents coming back. In the second one, they start off. They're on Hoth. They're fighting and everything. How does the episode eight start off? Do you remember? Episode eight starts off. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. I can't believe I. No, don't don't make me sit here and think about it. I can't. I can't believe episode. How does it start off? I I want to say there is a fight starting off just like it did in uh in in Empire Strikes Back. They're they're having a big battle going on, and they they get away basically, and regroup and go from there. And then in the last one, it's like Return of the Jedi. The you know only she is determined she's going to find these things that Kylo Ren's looking for. They're the same exact movies. You're exactly right, dude. They were literally after the the number seven came out, that was the first thing everybody said. They go, dude, I just watched uh I just watched a new hope. And it yeah, was and, like yep. And it's like Kathleen Kennedy just wanted her spin on the original movies put out there. Yep. Uh if you noticed Never one time did she put all three heroes together in one scene together. No. She said that she intentionally did that. She had no intention of ever putting the three of them in a scene together again. So the fans were robbed of that, and they were upset about that. So no one liked her, and because they didn't like her, they didn't like her movies mostly because her storyline was crap. Not her people, but her story direction she went with it was just ultimate crap. The only thing we have here that's going to save, I think... Uh, Star Wars other than the existing Disney stuff they're doing because this is a little bit different feel to it is that they're supposed to go back and do the old Republic yes and that could be fun right there now I also thought they could have went a little bit further they could have went back a little bit um, and touched on more Clone Wars stuff if they really wanted to they could have went between Clone Wars and Rebels and done that where you had the focus on Ahsoka and, um, oh, what's the dude's name? Thrawn? Well, she's going for the going for Thrawn, but I'm talking about the other Jedi guy. Um, Are you talking about from Rebels? Yeah. Uh, Kanan. The blind uh, Jedi master? Not the, that's not the name of that's... Rebels at the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. No, uh, it's it's the one that um that is that that meets up with Obi Wan at, at one point on Tatooine when uh, Darth Maul is trying to find him. Um, and and which uh in and, and and what 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 uh Star Wars are you talking about? Well, it's it's in Rebels. I mean, I'm trying to think of the name of the young Jedi guy. I don't know in if he. I, I don't think he was a Jedi Master. Oh, uh, um, the uh. Uh, gosh, um, uh, hold on. Yeah, the main character. I bet everybody's screaming at us right now. I know, they're screaming, you idiots, his name yeah. is... It's, uh, it's, um, Ezra. Ezra, thank you. Yeah. So when you're on the spot, it's hard to fit, it's, it's hard to bring this to your mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I have an excuse, I'm getting older, I don't know what your excuse is. I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, so, all right. We both got excuses, everybody. Yeah. But yeah, I thought they could have done movies ba- maybe based on that. You know, Ezra, Ahsoka, you know, uh, what she's going to throw on. That's what they're going to do now, though, with the, the Disney series. Mm-hmm. So maybe if they'd done that, we wouldn't have got the Disney series. And maybe the Disney series will turn out to be spectacular and we'll all be happy and move forward with it at that point. But I, I don't know a great deal about older public, so I, I can't talk intelligently about that or anything. But I know I had seen two names thrown around to play some of the roles, and one of them was Keanu Reeves, and the other was the guy that played Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, if they're gonna, um, if they're gonna play Revan, I, I, you know, I get it, um, but Revan. You know, for the people that know know about that character, I just don't see them as being to play able to play such a dark and mysterious Sith Lord. I just it, I don't envision them. Now, I could be totally wrong. I didn't see Heath Ledger playing the Joker, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was a total, total shock. So I would rather have the guy that plays Jon Snow than Keanu because Keanu's good in some stuff and then Keanu's Keanu in some stuff. So it's, you know, it's kind did of you, a did, do you Do you feel like you're going to be seeing him play the role possibly of some real dark Sith Lord? No. But out of nowhere, but out of nowhere, he's going to come out and be like, totally dude <laughs> yeah. you know or yeah. or is or is he gonna have a flashback of you know i know kung fu or yeah or i Parenthood mean Parenthood where he's like that's just what little dudes do <laughs> yes exactly i mean that's the one thing we fear the most right i right. mean he, he he may go all john wick on him for all we know and kill everybody too which so. would be fantastic because he doesn't have to talk um, right i would if they were going to do, which they are going to do it, I mean, they, they, they are. That's pretty much what's been decided. I want to see Darth Bane because yeah. Bane's who everybody, you know, most of the fans uh, are familiar with. And Bane would be so easy to do because he's a big, hulking, you know, guy. So you could use so many different types of, you know, uh, actors out there to playing. I mean, he just needs big muscles. Uh, so you could you could even take a guy who, like they did with Stallone. You could make him bigger. And uh, mm -hmm. Darth Bane has such a great story uh, that's already been written. So, you know, take it and run with it. Uh, who is the uh, who is the Sith Lord? I guess from the video games that they that they make a big deal out of. I, I never played any of them, so I can't I really. I don't remember. Uh, I can look it up. I played the Old Republic. Gosh, where did it come out? Like four twenty years ago. Well, I, I I played the online version of the Old Republic. I don't re remember any of the. There was. I, I didn't. I didn't go very. I didn't go very far into it. The one I played was. I guess it's the same game, but I played it on PC. And I didn't, I didn't go very far into. It. I mean, maybe a level twenty something character or a thirty something character out of like sixty or seventy levels you could get at the time. So I, I might have got half the story into it, and that was it. And it just wasn't for me. I was already playing another game that I was deeply engrossed in, and I didn't have time to put in that kind of time into another game, trying to learn something like that. So yeah, um, I didn't either. Um, I did, uh, I did play the game. Uh, but I don't remember offhand, uh, who the, who the guy was. And I know people are screaming at me right now, uh, because he's got the iconic, uh, mask, um, with the, the, the white mask with the, the red paint on it. Um, who was that? Uh, Knights was of the Old Republic. Yeah, it was Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, Gosh, it was done by Bioware too. That's what. Well, I mean, just looking up a couple of things here, I see a Darth Sion from Knights of the Old Republic. That might be well, who it was. I'll look it up uh, while you're uh, while we're talking. All right. Well, so I'm like I'm kind of looking at one thing right now. Uh, Star Wars Knights uh, looks like Knights of the Old Republic Two: The Sith Lords. There's a guy here with a white mask, with which looks like red blood on it or something. Yeah. And I don't know if that's the guy they're calling Darth Sion or if it's somebody else. I think uh, I think that's it. Um, I don't. Know also, a, there's also a Darth Magus. It looks like Magus or Malgus. Yeah, I don't, I don't know those. Uh, so those, yeah, the video game lore, I'm not very familiar with. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know how far it goes into the actual Star Wars lore if it was made specifically for the video games. Right. I've always been more of a movie kind of guy. So, I mean, yep. for those of you listening who are having the ultimate fit right now because you love Star Wars and we're butchering this part of it, uh, I, you know, I've never been much on the games for Star Wars. Um, I mean, I, I, I can only nerd out to a game so much and World of Warcraft had me locked in for too long. So me too, dude. Oh my I, God. I could go all day about how that almost ended my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple peoples. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, matter, matter of fact, if it came out a little bit longer ago, we could have brought that up into a show, oh, dude. but, uh, anyway, 
Um, yeah, the, the, so the games aren't really our strong suit. We've pointed out there is a number of you know of, of, of Sith lords that were in the past were powerful. And just Darth Malgus is listed. There's a Darth Sion listed. We got Darth Plagueis. You got Darth Bane. You've got uh, Darth Maul, obviously from the you know the, the Phantom yeah, Menace. Everybody great, likes so great much. Character. Fantastic character. Darth Maul was to me. He was exactly for me. The, the new Sith, the third Sith Lord they introduced, I was like, absolutely perfect. To me, the battle at the end of Phantom Menace is fantastic. I love yeah. every second of it. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would say do Darth Bane because, again, it's just so well done. And it's Darth Bane is about the story of how he became a Sith Lord. And Darth Bane's actually the one that reintroduced the only master and apprentice. But because before that, they had gone back to where there were armies of Sith Lords, right? And mm-hmm. uh, they were destroyed. And Bane was the one that, that, you know, said the reason that we lost this great war was because we only there only needs to be a master and apprentice. So that's what the whole book is about is him and his apprentice, which is actually a girl. And if you don't know the, the Bane series, it leaves you at the end wondering who exactly still is the master it, and apprentice without spoiling it too much. So you said there was a girl. Is that the one? Is that the Darth Treya? Uh, no. Or is that it's, someone different? Yeah, it's someone different. I can't believe I can't remember the name. Uh, uh, who hold on i i have to do that because uh i i love that book and i can't believe who is darth bane's apprentice and she was all, zana it was zana yeah zana darth okay zana. yeah I'm actually seeing it here right now. I'm reading further down before it got to Darth Treya. It does say Apprentice Darth Xana right here. And every Sith that followed him until Darth Sidious. Sidious fulfilled Bane's dream and finally destroyed the Jedi Order. But it yeah. talks about the Order of One. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it, I hope they do that. And if, if, if they, if they change it up a little bit, fine. But I think that most Star Wars fans, uh, the ones that delved into the books a little bit, like I did a little bit, mm-hmm. um, you you know, they would be like, heck yeah, man, that's the story y'all needed to do. Uh, and it's so well done that anybody that didn't know the books, they would just, you're captivated all through the books. It's, it's really well done. Yeah, and of course we left out two uh, obvious Sith Lords that had the name Darth in front of them that we didn't even mention, uh, Darth Sidious being the the biggest one. Yeah. We all, but we, we, we did mention him as Palpatine already, though. But, uh, you know, then we didn't mention Darth Tyrannus, which yeah. was uh, just Dooku. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Not not on the Dooku train. That's not, you, well, you know, that's, a, that's another movie they could spin off as well, you know. The way that uh, Dooku started out and changed over like he did and everything, that could be something. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it really could because the possibilities the, are endless for the movie spinoffs they could do yep, and shows yep. and everything that Disney could come up with. It really is. Um, jumping um, around a little bit here, we need to go to the prequels a little bit before we go too far. We're forty, and believe it or not, we're forty nine minutes in almost. We're not quite there because we did a little bit of a audio break where we were trying to figure some things out earlier. But um, we've got. Um, the prequels we haven't touched on yet. And when the Phantom Menace first came out, I was super excited because mm-hmm. it's a finally, it's a new star Wars thing. And all I see in the previews is you've got this, this mysterious Sith Lord come out and he breaks, uh, he's got this hood over him and he pulls the hood off and he looks like some devil kind of guy. Yep. And he takes his lightsaber and he holds it out in front of him and it, the blade just goes out to the side. You're like, well, why is he doing that? Until you see him activate the other side. And it's just genius. <laughs> and people were going nuts. I remember yep. at the theater, going to watch it at the theater. I mean, the 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 people in the theater just went crazy when yep. the dual side lightsaber came out. It was something else. And you didn't know that's what it did until that point. They saved it until that point in time. Yep. Because whenever he had his previous meeting with uh, Qui-Gon, he did not have both sides of it open. 
And uh, speaking of Qui Gon, that's where we're coming back uh, kind of full circle here to Obi Wan. That was Qui Gon. Qui Gon Jinn was Obi Wan's master. That's who yes. he learned from. And it was a and, terrible idea to have him killed off. Yes, he was, it was the best character in that uh, three movie series. Man, but yeah, I, I, I imagine you couldn't have him in Revenge of the Sith, though. That had to be the storyline between Obi Wan and Anakin. That had yeah. to be that. Yeah. But you couldn't, you didn't have to kill him. You could have taken him forward into the Clone Wars and he could have died in the Clone War battles yeah. with all that going on. Uh, that could have been more believable with everything that was, you know, so many of these robots, you know, that they're fighting and everything. That had been more believable of him dying than letting, oh, man, I just. If it, 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 frust- it, it frustrates me, easily. it frustrates me thinking about it, and I can't even spit the name Darth Maul out. I'm so frustrated yeah. that that's how they did it. You know, um, a lot of people hated the fact of the way that Obi Wan was able to kill Darth Maul because he slung himself up out of the pit, flipped over him, and cuts him in half. When Darth Maul obviously has the high ground. Yep. They're like, what gives with that? So they say in the book. That they put when they put the the book out for the movie, that at that point in time, Darth Maul is overjoyed with himself. His feelings are kind of getting away from him. His concentration is not there, and he's not. He don't have that feeling of the force of Obi Wan making the movie he's making that he's about to do, and so it catches him off guard. That's really kind of pitiful considering that he just took out you know one of the top you know probably Jedi's at the time. So just to, to think that he just lets a little momentary lapse of judgment get him, that's not very believable. Yeah, it's not, man. It was, I mean, it, you know, it was good all the way to that part, and it was like, eh, you know, yeah. okay. But, but then, but then with the fight though, with the fight with uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon versus Darth Maul, and him revealing the duel, the double sided lightsaber. That was the best lightsaber fight we had ever seen. Yep. It was so well choreographed and action packed with it. Uh, anything from, you know, flips to, you know, him taking on two at the same time. And, uh, and the way he was twirling around the lightsaber duel, to the, the staff and everything, it was awesome. And then, of course, we lose Qui Gon at the end of it. You don't even get him back immediately as a ghost because this isn't something that's known of at the time. It's not really that you could do like a, a a force ghost or anything. They didn't bring this up uh, until like the last one. But to go into um, Attack of the Clones, I kind of expected more of the Attack of the Clones with the Clone Wars. That's yeah, what I wanted. Uh, they, they did. I, I wanted more Clone War than I wanted yeah. uh, a story of Count Dooku. I feel like we got more of a story of Count Dooku with a little bit of uh oh, I don't know. It's just more Dooku than anything. Yeah, and it I, was the only good parts of that movie were basically when Obi Wan fought Django. You know, uh, when Django, you know, escaped in Slave One. Otherwise, you know, the end battle scene was terrible because it's like, dude, these are Jedi's and they're just getting mowed down easily. Like they're. How are you going to be a Jedi and easily get killed by a flying bug, dude? That's just... That's <laughs> the little flying bug thing. thing. The fact that you get all the little... Uh, I forget what they called them at the time. Um, the um, the robots for the, the the Sith and everything they, they bring out. I forget what they what they call them. The battle droids? The battle droids. Yeah, just the battle droids. I mean, I, the, the fact that all these battle droids... Um, coming at them and everything, and they've handled them so easily throughout the other movies, just with anything from a force push to a lightsaber slinging yep. the, the shot back at them or just cutting into them with the lightsabers. you got an army of Jedi coming against an army of robots. You're going to tell me that army of Jedi is not strong enough as a unit <laughs> to take out all these little robot things, right? I know they're outnumbered by a ton of them, by a lot of them, and they fought off quite a bit of them until they're down to just a few. And then you see Yoda show up with the clone troopers. And this is where they start talking about, you know, this is where Attack of the Clones, I guess, is, is brought up now because yeah. 
now you now they have access to this that somebody else has been working on for them and, and yoda has brought them into battle to help rescue everybody who's there uh so you're down to what obi-wan um anakin uh uh windu uh kiamundu um oh gosh i can't think of the other's names uh you're down to like eight nine ten people yep. maybe a little bit more uh, scattered um and these are mainly the ones from the jedi council it seems like and then to top it off they're honorary jedis the backstreet boys or something they toss them yeah you remember they toss them lightsabers that, that's their big scene in it right and it's like why <laughs> make a big deal about that that was a big deal at the time they, they brought up uh I, I wish it could have just went better. And the sword fight with um Windu and Yoda was 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 pretty good. You could see Yoda with go Dooku. crazy. But what 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 I say? Said Windu. I'm sorry. Oh, it's I said all right. Windu. Which it was awesome when uh Windu cut off Django Fett's head. That was yeah. Uh, and you got to see a glimpse again. You know, the difference between, like, when Anakin, you know, the big, like, kind of buffalo rhino beast, how he used, you know, the force to kind of gain control, you know, and it took him a second to do it compared to Windu, where Windu just thought about it and made that beast, like, run over Django. Uh, that was cool. But, you know, like you said at the end with uh, with Dooku, uh for Anakin just to go blindly running in like a tool and, you know, get thrown and he's out of the picture. Uh, and then Obi-Wan just to get his, that that's always what ticked me off. Why did Obi-Wan who's, you know, some consider arguably the most powerful Jedi ever. How is he twice in this one and the next one getting his butt totally kicked by Dooku? I don't know, but I did read something once before about how they talked about Dooku and how he was trained on lightsaber battles and the fact that the way his lightsaber was shaped had something to do with him being uh, most of the times the superior one of the of the two dueling. Because hmm. and I don't know why the fact that it's shaped where it goes downward a little bit throws yeah. him off so much, but supposedly it would throw people off uh, in that, you know, in the Star Wars universe, it would throw off the other Jedi or something and confuse them or something, which doesn't make sense no. either way you look at it. But that was there. That, that was one explanation I've read about that. And that might be how they applied it, you know, to Obi-Wan also. But then again, why didn't it apply to Anakin? Anakin didn't seem to have any trouble with him, especially in the third movie when you get to Revenge of the Sith. And they got him there on the ship where they've taken, you know, Palpatine hostage and they're there to rescue him. Yeah, I mean, he makes quick work of Dooku. Yeah, it's not, he, he says it's not like last time, you know, I'm more powerful now, you know. He, he's getting all crazy and everything on him. Arrogant, to say the least. So, Yeah, I um, when it comes down to the those three, I can, because I'm not a fan of them except in, you know, certain little parts. Like, there's parts, you know, like we talked about, the, uh, you know, the duel between, you know, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Maul. I did like the pod race uh, just because it was fun. And at that time, you had never seen special effects like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but nobody at any point had enough gumption or enough balls that to tell Lucas, hey, man, this ain't very good. Like, this is... N- you're everything you're doing in these three is just not very good at all, man. Like you need to go back and try it again. Don't change everything. Uh, the underwater scene, you know, where they're going through the planet core and Phantom Menace, great scene. Uh, and that's where know. Jar Jar should have been left at and cut off. Yes. Yes. Should have, you know, he should have been eaten by the bigger fish. Um <laughs> Uh, you know, that was to me why they were so terrible is because nobody told Lucas that at any point, hey, man, they're just not very good, dude. They're just not. No, but I mean, no one's going to tell step up and tell George Lucas that, though. Right. Unfortunately. That's just not going to happen. The lightsaber battle at the end of the Revenge of the Sith was the greatest we had, 
period. They just kept getting better and better as they went, it seemed like. The way they choreographed that, and although some of it's just simple stuff they did, the camera angles changed and made it look 10 times better than what it was. Yeah. I like the beginning of the of the 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 scene and I liked the end of it. You know, of course the end is iconic and I love the beginning. I did not like the swinging through the lava and and all no. that. Um I I didn't a little, like little that, over the top. But the beginning and the end of it I thought were uh, very well done. Yeah, and 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 the words they had with each other, or yeah. that that was a pretty powerful part of it. As far as just words only, it was kind of powerful. You know, when he's telling him, you know, how he's he he's failed. He's I'm sorry, Anik and I have failed you, and all this stuff. Yeah. And he's telling him that you know, uh, you're either with me or you're against me. This is only a Sith deals and absolutes. Yeah. And um, he says, I will I, I will stop you. And he says, you will try. And then they they go, and then at the end of it, whenever he had taken him from the high ground and cut him in half when he jumped when he jumped at him, and he tells him, you know, that the Obi Wan speech to him about, you know, he's 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 really hating it that he's had to kill him. He he thinks he's killed him, and he, he hates the fact he's done what he's done. He hates himself for it, and he's telling him that, you know, you were my brother, I loved you, and all this stuff. You were supposed to bring uh, balance to the force and all this stuff, and. Then you see all the anger come out in Anakin. Yeah. You know, he's in there burning alive practically. I guess he is going to be kind of mad, right? But it's just, <laughs> it's, it's this really strong scene, though, of the two of them. And all, if you think about it, all this, all this dummy had to do just to make sure it was done, which was go over there and take his lightsaber and go, bonk, yep, <laughs> right in the head. It. And that's it. It's over for sure. But he didn't even make sure, he didn't even make sure that, that was, they just left him to die that way. And uh, not thinking anything else about it, I guess. He could never, you know, and and I think, again, you know, he just couldn't bring himself to it. He couldn't bring himself because he could have, when Anakin tried to flip over him, he could have killed him right then and there. He cut off his leg, cut off both legs and the arm, you know, disabled him. He could have easily killed him. He could not bring himself to kill his little brother. And right. I get it, man. Don't know if I could do it either. Uh, and, uh, you know, but you're right. The acting, you know, that's the only time Hayden Christian uh, ever did good acting. Um, but, uh, you know, the acting in that scene at the very end was, it was perfection, man. You felt the, 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 sorrow, the sorrow and the sadness from Obi-Wan that I can't believe this is how it's actually turned out. Um, so well done. Um, Revenge of the Sith was, you know, I've seen it a few times. I, I watched it a bunch when it came out. Of course, I ran and bought the DVD. I've watched it over and over again. I'm okay with it. They should have cut it shorter. It was too freaking long. The The filler yeah. in the middle was terrible. It's like, I get it. Y'all love each other. I get it. Okay. You love each other. All right. Can we please get back to some cool, you know, fight scenes um i thought they went too in depth with that uh, but i definitely liked it better the attack of the clones i think attack of the clones is just total throwaway it's pretty much my least favorite star wars movie yeah so just to go ahead and throw this out there at you we, we we've talked about various aspects of the universe and everything we've talked about the original four five and six that was released we've done over the prequels now we talked about um, we we kind of touched on the Kathleen Kennedy things she put out there and some of the Disney stuff, but if you could pick one thing right now that they have not yet done that you think would make a great movie, not necessarily a trilogy, but a movie, what would you go ahead and pick? And I I know we we know that the the older public's coming, so I don't know if I'd go with the older public or not, but. Uh, what is one thing you'd like to see? I would like to see uh, the rise of uh, Palpatine, how he, uh, you know, got to the Senate. Um, I've read the books, uh, and they're really good. But I, uh, just for me personally, to see how Palpatine manipulates his way into power, right? Because since he had that strong uh, 
you know, dark side, he was able to conceal things that he was doing, and he's also able to see into the future. So for him to be able to manipulate uh, his way all the way to the top, and I'm talking about like even before he became a senator, those books uh, are really well done uh, about how he's able to do it. And I would also um, really like, you know, I'm more of a dark side fan just in general. Uh, I like the, the the whole dark side of the Star Wars. I'd like to see uh, Thrawn um, because I've read the Thrawn book too. And so you get into a lot more like political and, you know, uh, a lot more thinking uh, of how these guys get to where they're at. Um, so that's that's what I would like to see. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick with what I said earlier. I'm going to stick with seeing a movie based upon uh, Luke Skywalker almost being turned, but not quite getting there. Yep. And uh, also showcasing, you know, the twins of Jason and Jaina Solo. That would have been something to see right there, I think. And they had the ability to make that to a, to a trilogy if they want to. Yep. But just a standalone movie could still be done and done well. Yeah, it could. And you could just, you could do it in one movie and it'd be done. Um, you know, just like they did with Solo and um, what they did with Rogue One. You don't have to go into a trilogy with them. Just leave them be at that. Um, now, the only the only downside is you're going to get the Star Wars universe out there, the Star Wars fans, to agree that you're going to have to have somebody else playing the part of Han Solo and Princess Leia. You know, there's no going back unless they just do old CGI stuff, I guess, with them. And good Lord, they can now. It's incredible. I mean, uh, they, they did it with Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. Yeah, and you couldn't even, I mean, I thought, in the the scene where he comes to save them in season two, I thought that would just be it. And you no, know, sure enough, they take you know Grogu to be there with him, and you get a whole episode of just this CGI computer, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And man, they didn't miss a beat. I, it, it looked just like him. Uh, all of his yeah. mannerisms, everything. It, it's crazy what they can do. But yeah, I'm. I don't have a problem with somebody playing them. Uh, I I know that's going to sound like heresy uh, to some some Star Wars fans, but I really don't, man. I don't have a problem with a a, a different person's take uh, on you know portraying them the way they should because we've seen it in other movies. Hence, you know Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson, uh, both well done Jokers. And right. very opposite style Joker. So I don't have a problem with it. And I agree with you. I think both those ideas, uh, you know, would, would, would hold up well and would be very intriguing. And with the Luke, most people, your random fans, have no clue about that story. They have no clue how close he got to the dark side. So, you know, I, I, I think it would be quite surprising and intriguing for, for people to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are actually at about our time limit, John. We yeah, have reached it, believe fast. it or not. I mean, it goes by super fast, man. When you're sitting here talking about something you enjoy, it goes by real fast. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, if you ever get a chance, man, you want to come back and talk something else, man, I'll bring you back on for sure. Uh, there's plenty of things out there I've got left to go over. And You uh, mentioned Lord of the Rings, dude. Yeah. Lord, Lord of the of Rings, the Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can uh I can definitely um you know do well on those. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down with you on those. Uh, those have been a Lord of the Rings have been one of my favorites over the years. Uh, it actually I hate to say this on this episode, I'll get roasted for this probably, but it actually overtook my favorite trilogy of movies. Oh, um, it man. did, man. Yeah. It did. I, I'm gonna get burned for this one. Yeah. But, man, I mean, come on, man. Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King, man. I just have such a hard time finding a better three movies together consecutively that well, that I that I like so much. And I say that because, you know, we got four, five, and six. I wasn't huge on six. One, two, and three, not real huge on one, but okay with it. And then the last Kathleen Kennedy thing, seven, eight, and nine, they were just okay. Yeah. I'm talking from beginning to end. You could even throw in the first three Hobbits. Uh, if you want to go back to prequel with the Hobbits, 
and I'll take the three hobbits in a row. Those are my favorite. The one with I, I, Bilbo. Yeah, I mean, I love them. I mean, yep. the fact that you get to see all that good stuff come in, and we'll definitely, if anything, we'll we'll definitely go with that one these days soon. I I try to stretch things out a little bit when I go things like like this right here at the Star Wars. We've we've gone in depth with the Star Wars universe yep. as we can, I guess. You know, so I'll probably put a few things in between here. I'm I got a few more guests I'm working on. Uh, the guy that I. You may or may not uh, remember who played the original Boba Fett um, in uh, A New Hope. Uh, but the guy who played it, uh, I've actually been in, in contact with him, and he said he'd come on the show and do an episode. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So he's uh, he's the one from the, you know, when you get the extended scene, and they're at the Moss Eisley spaceport there, and Jabba's there wanting to talk to Han. That's the the guy playing Boba Fett right there. This is the guy. He's done other things since then, uh, special effects wise in movies and such. But this guy, I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm gonna try and, and get a date, you know, set in stone to get him on here. Dude, you uh, need to make sure tons of people know that. I watched the quick little documentary about him when there was the white, when the, the Boba Fett suit was white. It was a stormtrooper, and they changed it up. So yes, you need to let. I hope people know about this one because that's that's a big grab. Congratulations, dude. That's, that's well, it's, it's it's not a hundred percent there yet, but I mean it's getting there. And I I can tell you real quick here before I go, just give everybody a heads up uh, if you're if you're listening to this show to be ready in case I announce him coming on. Uh, we're really working toward making this work. Uh, Mark Austin is yeah. his name. Yep. Mark Austin. I just had to make sure I got my new work schedule down pat and what I was so I could know when to schedule him to come on. So he's Excellent. good for most most any day. He, he's good for most any afternoon during the week and especially on weekends, he said. So I, I will get him one day here soon, hopefully in the next few weeks. And if that's the case, I'll make an announcement of it and let everybody know. And uh, we'll talk to him about some Star Wars, obviously, what it's like being Boba Fett and all the special things he's done since then with special effects and such. That's so. incredible. Great job. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't when the the, the new uh, Lord of the Rings, when the, the series finally gets done, how about having me on when they're done? And yeah, because I've, I've been watching about. that as well. I've been watching the yeah, Rings of Power has been great so far. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll work. So uh, just so everybody knows here, like I always say, you can find the show anywhere you get your podcast downloaded. We're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on Stitcher, we're on Amazon Music, we're on Google Music. Um, some of the things we have are still on YouTube. You can always fall back to YouTube and watch the older shows and see the interviews I've had with people. And, um, you know, RetroLifeForYou at gmail.com and Instagram is probably the two easiest ways to catch me. So um, as far as social media goes, yeah, Instagram and I guess Facebook. I don't use Facebook. It's, it's tied to Instagram really, though, so... But that's the best ways you can reach out to us. If you have any ideas you want to hear on the show, anything you want to comment on, uh, something we did good, something we did bad, you know, let us know either way. We want to hear everything. And we want to thank everybody for listening today. John, especially, thank you for coming on here and talking to Star Wars Universe with us, man. Thanks for having me, dude. All right, man. Hang out for a second, all right? And we'll see you guys next show.